Hello and welcome to Beach View, our podcast about different things. Usually music, apparently. <laughs> yeah, we tend to uh, talk about music a lot. Well, today we have a special guest with us, Travis. Hey! Travis is my husband. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, Trav. Sure, anytime. It's a returning guest, too. That's right. Second time. Holler. So uh, today we're going to be talking about another album, and that album is Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreak. Yes. So I'm excited about this one. This was released in 2008. It was his fourth studio album. It went three times platinum, if you're interested in that statistic. Whoa, yeah. And... It's a very new direction for Kanye. You know, it's a very pop album as opposed to his previous rap stuff. Indeed. Man, so uh, what'd y'all think? General thoughts? Travis, I'll let you go first since you're our guest. Sure. I thought it was excellent from top to bottom. I thought it was very congruent, the whole thing. It was just really good as a good departure from everything that he's done prior. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of where he starts to develop his new sound, and I was pretty excited about it when the first few hits came up, but there were actually a couple songs I've never heard from it, because I've never listened to it in this fashion from, from front, you know, front to back, so I thought it was, uh, I thought it was an excellent, excellent album, and um, I, I, I know back when it first came out, it kind of created a lot of buzz because people... Just when artists tend to try new things, people kind of, some people love it, some people hate it. So, and I think this is a, I think this is like a, a perfect example of that. I agree. So the thing that stuck out to me the most was that I have never, well, I can't say never, but very seldom do you listen to a whole record that sticks so much to the theme. So I appreciated that. I like when, when stuff is, congruent and it it all works together and it's all on theme i liked his new sound i I did remember when it came out that it was like you said kind of controversial because you know he used a lot of auto-tune i think every song on here he's auto-tune we know kanye singing isn't like you know number one he's more (laughs) of a rapper but this one he sang a lot you know what I mean? But, like, uh, I think it was a, a huge departure. I thought it worked really well. This is also the first time I sat and listened to the whole thing all together. And there were also a couple of songs that I've never heard before and that I actually liked. So I thought it was awesome. You know, it does go more into that kind of, like, indie pop sound. But I liked it because I like hearing different things from artists. I thought it was very creative, as is. Ye's signature, you know, I think for me, uh, his creativity has always stood out to me in, in his beats. And lyrically, I don't think he's as creative as some others, but the beats are definitely creative. And I thought he stuck true to that. Yeah, I thought it was good. What'd you think, Bryce? All right. Well, yeah, this is a really good album. My introduction to Kanye, actually. I mean, I'd heard the singles, ah. obviously. He's a big artist known about the sort of celebrity personality aspect but Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't really get into him until after one of his singles i um only one i think is what it was called uh after that released and people were talking about it and they're like this is kind of like a happier version of 808s and i'm like oh well i like this song i should go check out 808 so actually like the first time i heard this was like as an album i mean obviously i'd heard the singles but so, mm-hmm. to me, this is always, yeah. like, an album, like, as sort of a unit. Yeah, it definitely is, for sure. Yeah, his uh, production work really shines, I mean, that's what he's known for, really, is his production. and It really shines yes. on this album. And it's very musically focused, too, which I like. It's kind of yes. lyrically sparse, mm-hmm. which, you know, that's... Yes. I'm more of a, we've discussed this before, music person than a mm-hmm. lyrics person. Yeah, and I, I, I specifically like this album uh, because of the music and, and not because of the lyrics. I, I yeah. This is kind of like where he really starts to venture into working with like orchestral type stuff and working with choir type, like when mm-hmm. he starts on that trajectory. And I thought I thought what's really cool about this is 
from front to back. You know, you get the same drum and bass sound. You get so you get a lot of uh, like violin and cello type uh, sound coming through. And I thought I thought that was like really awesome. You know, that was some of my favorite stuff. For sure, for sure. I read one time that they did this album in like three weeks. Huh. That he he laid all the track, and I was I don't know if that's you know completely true, but I read it before that uh, I don't know. If I forget who it was. It was an interview with somebody who worked on the album. So that makes sense that it's all, the, you know, has the common theme. And and Bryce, I know you don't like when we get into, like, backstory. <laughs> but I think that just um, plays so much into what an artist does on a particular album. So I'm just going to go into this for a second. So at the time, 08, he had just broken up with his fiance. Alexis Pfeiffer. I don't even know. I didn't even remember that he was engaged. But anyway, he had just broken up with his fiance and his mother passed away from complications from, I think, a liposuction surgery. So this was a time where he was, you know, obviously, you know, he's so known for his ego, but he was questioning, like, you know, he blamed himself for his mother's death because he really tried to grab for fame and fortune and all this stuff. And is that vanity the reason that his mom died? You know, so he was grappling with a lot of this, um, questioning himself and his motives and, and the consequences of that. So I think that fits just perfectly with all of these songs on here. So <laughs> I won't get into it too much more, but I like to know the context. So <laughs> I thought that was, um, that was kind of a, interesting time in his life where again like you said he really got into some different things here so all right let's yeah. get into it oh well one more note on that thing so yeah i mean if you want to talk about sure. context talk about context that's just not my thing but i think it, like <laughs> I, I had known yeah. about like going into this that it was after his mother died and obviously it's a breakup album like a lot of these songs deal directly yeah. with it being a breakup but Mm -hmm. Like, if I didn't know beforehand that this was, like, his mom had died, th that doesn't really appear lyrically on the album. So, I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, well, the only part that I thought, I wonder if that was about his mom, is in um, one of the songs, I'm trying to remember which one it is. I think it's one of the later songs on the album. But he talks about, like, he says something like, since I lived with my mom, and, like, you were the only, or she was the only one who stayed, like, came on tour and stayed. I don't, I was wondering if that was a reference to, is because I think that line comes before the line where he says something about his mom. So I was wondering if that was a reference to her, like, she was the only woman who had, like, stayed at his side when all the rest was heartbreak, you know? So that's the only part that I thought, oh, I wonder if that was about his mom. So, anyway, yeah, there you right, go. Well, let's get into the track by track. First track. Let's do it. Say you will. All right. I like the beats on this one. I like the heart monitor kind of sound. Right, you know? yeah. I thought that was kind of clever, um, you know, for a heartbreak album. I thought that was kind of cool. But, yeah, I think, I think this one's about, you know, he doesn't want to open up to someone in fear that they'll just leave anyway kind of thing but anyway i, I like this one what did y'all think yeah so i thought uh same thing like the the heartbeat sound throughout the song i thought that kind of set the tone for the album as mm -hmm. well as like the synth that he uses it pretty much it really does an excellent job of setting the tone of what's what's to come and you know there wasn't a whole lot to me other than that to to, to this song it's just you know, it's kind of, it really kind of steered the direction that the album was going to go. And I thought this is probably one of the better intros that you hear on, on yeah. most, especially rap albums, because most of them open with like skits or things that are just kind of not really too important. But I, f I found that this was really steered the, steered the ship, so to speak. Right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. The, uh, the percussion, like you mentioned in the sort of like heart monitor sounds i think are incredible and they, they create a really great atmosphere along with the synth choices and i like how it's really steady that's in the background throughout the whole song and yeah i especially like that this has that really long extended ending like 
You know, after the lyrics mm-hmm. have cut out, there's still several minutes of instrumentals. Yes, I like that, and there's a few of the songs on here that did that, and I like that kind of treatment. I think it's it's just cool. It sets the tone, you right. know? All right, and this is, like, yeah, dead on about, like, it starting the album, right? And, and I think really emotionally nails it. It's just a great intro. Yep. For sure. Good job, Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye, if you're listening, we think you did a good job on this. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Any, uh, number two. Welcome to Heartbreak featuring Kid Cudi. All right, so I want to say real quick, I thought, like, his features weren't, like, you know, you usually think, like, oh, I want to hear the features, you know? I thought his features on here weren't, uh, they didn't shine as much of, as the other songs or as much as Ye, you know, was shining on this. So um, I thought it was fine. Like, Kid Cudi was fine in this, but um, I think I'm trying to read what I wrote because the cat was, like, walking all over me when I was trying to write notes <laughs> on this one. <laughs> But I like I like the one uh, the line where he says, "Dad cracked a joke, all the kids laughed, but I couldn't hear him all the way in first class." Which like we kind of use <laughs> that kind of attitude because we don't have kids and we like to travel. So I'm like, "Oh yeah, go deal with your little kid problems." Like we're going, you know, to some exotic place, you know, like just kind of like a bragging, like, "Oh, we don't have to deal with that." Haha. But in this use um in this song it's like he's examining his life and like kind of like well I don't have that family I don't have that core and he's sad about it you know so but but that was so that was kind of sad that you know if somebody wants that of course you want them to have that but anyway I thought that one line was like haha that's kind of cool even though he used it in a sad way I would use it in a like (laughs) laughing at people way yeah (laughs) Because so, I'm nice like that. <laughs> yeah, but the strings yeah. in this song are, the, like, the synth strings are incredible. I think they're really good. Yes. And the percussion, I mean, the percussion throughout this whole album. So I, I'm probably yes. going to be repeating myself a lot, but the percussion, no, the production, good, yeah. the synth instruments are great. I really yeah. like the tone, the, like, opening with the string sets. Yeah, yes. no, it's, this was, I thought this was a fantastic song. In fact, I, you know, I think that the, the first six songs on this album are all, you know, very, very, very good in production value and very, you know, similar. But this song particularly, I, I found really good. And along with kind of what Jen said that I don't necessarily think the features in this in this album did anything to add or create any relevance to the album itself. I feel like they could have been dropped out completely. And you, you yeah. wouldn't really miss anything. But what I did like about this is, um, you know, in his earlier CDs, he, he does some internal kind of internal examination as well. But it's not very deep. It's very surface. But in mm-hmm. this, I feel like it was definitely his first, like, proclamation to being, like, um, self-absorbed or feeling like he, he needs, yes. like, uh, self-development. And I thought that was really, really like kind of interesting. True true introspection on this yeah. one. I think this is the first time in all of his albums that you really see this um kind of autobiographical which he's done a little bit you know prior to this but like you said it, it was all on the surface yeah. and this is the first time I think I could be wrong but that he really delved into it and I I really appreciated that on this whole album because it's where he becomes open and honest about these things that are battling in his head. And we'll see that more and more and more. Like, you know, we know eventually he gets diagnosed as bipolar. He talks a lot about that. And I really love that he's just open and honest, you know, with all of these struggles that he's going through. And again, like we've said in past albums, that makes it relatable to other people. And I really appreciate that when artists do that. Yep. Okay, but... I've, I've got to ask, how do y'all feel about the lyrics? Because I, I like the chorus, both in lyrics and in sound, but uh, some of these verses are rough. Yeah, it's, yeah, they a little Yeah, rough. they are. They Some of them are pretty, um, like, they definitely weak. I mean, they're not, they're, they're not as creative as, as what they can be. And ironic, ironically, yeah. I didn't care for the chorus at all. <laughs> oh, so, huh. I, really? I just particularly, I really <laughs> like the, the, the music, the, you know, everything that was going into the background of this song. 
yeah, it, lyrically, this wasn't a great song by any means, but I did like what, what it represented, but it wasn't very strong lyrically. Yeah. I thought, you know, I like the song. I like the music and the lyrics were okay. I think this is more like, you know, just a kind of song for himself almost. You know what I mean? Like just yeah. kind of, hey, I want to get this out there. It's not like a super strong. Yeah song but i think it, it fits well on the album yes. yeah they're the, they're effective too for that like introspection even if they are kind of rough yeah right exactly and i, and I think that was yeah. the whole point like you, you know it's yeah. it's just one of the things like when you're dealing with something like that he's he's getting something off his chest it's not necessarily has to be like this great piece of poetry it's just you know like this is this is what's yeah. up <laughs> you know yeah here's what i'm feeling right now yeah but I think I think the music is what really supports this song, and what you know, I thought I thought it was incredible. Totally. All right. Well, next song. All right. Heartless. Number three. Heartless. So yeah, this is the big single. I don't know if this one was bigger than uh, Love Lockdown, but this one, you know, it was a big single it was everywhere at the time. From what I remember, mm -hmm. I was quite young when this album came out, so. No, this was, and it still is, you'll hear it every once in a while, you know. But I thought this was the biggest hit from the album. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, I mean, this this one is recognizable as soon as you hear, you know, the opening chords. And I like this song, and it sticks in your head, you know, I always, always sing along to it. I think it's a great song. Yeah, I, I agree. And it, this is one of the songs, like, uh, right away when you hear it, you kind of remember where you are in time because at at the time they this was uh really popular it was the uh, the saints were in the playoffs and like that kind of bring brings you yeah. back to that time it, it was we had a kicker by the name of garrett hartley so they used to always say you know how can you be so hartley yes so yeah <laughs> i forgot so about right that. away that automatically like you know kind of brings uh. you back to that <laughs> time and and so it's it's Overall, is an excellent song for, especially for being a, a such a huge pop success. Because a lot of times those songs they'll fade and they'll they'll kind of get dated over time. And I find that this is one I can listen to routinely, and it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not like oh, that's you know two thousand eight, two thousand nine. I'm you know over it. Mm hmm. No, I thought this was good. Yeah. Really good use of auto tune too. Like the chorus yes. is mostly just yeah. uh, the auto tune vocals, and I think it works really, really well. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, auto tune gets a bad rap, but I think Kanye's use on this whole album, I thought, it was just really good. I think it adds to the music. It doesn't take away from it. You know, I like yeah, it. In, in fact, I would I'd probably argue that this song without it would probably not be as good. I think it's it's oh, yeah. definitely, definitely what makes what makes that sound. Yes, absolutely. All right, number four, amazing featuring Young Jeezy. So this is another example of one of the features. I just think Young Jeezy is funny to me because when you hear Young Jeezy, like you automatically know that's Young Jeezy. Like he only has one sound. You know what I mean? And that's not like to be hard on him. I just think um. Like, he just has a signature sound, and, and it's like, that's totally Young Jeezy. So, I just felt like the feature wasn't, it wasn't bad, but it just, like you said, doesn't really add to it, I thought. Um, but I really like the beat of this yeah. song, and I thought it was a good song overall. I just um, was kind of like, eh, I don't know, like, if Young Jeezy fits in on the atmosphere of this whole album, you know what I mean? I absolutely agree with that. Um, although... He does, uh, he does have one of my most used quotes when he says, I'm standing on a podium trying to watch my sodium because we always yeah. talk about my sodium <laughs> intake. So that's, right. that, that's something that hits home to me. But other than that, I mean, yeah. he, he's, uh, Jeezy doesn't do anything to add to it. He's more of a, he's more of a rapper that his, his rhymes are very, um, it, they're very, I don't know how you would put it, but it's, it's kind of like, um, silence. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, um, not as creative, maybe? No, not they, as, no they're just, um, I don't know, I don't know how you would describe it, actually. 
it's it's kind of okay. like uh like primary colors you know it's not there, there's no <laughs> there's no they're simple yeah they're very simple they're they're not complex yeah, yeah. They're definitely not yeah. complex there's yeah. no forward thinking or there's nothing like you know i feel like quite yeah. a bit of the rhymes feel, yeah. on this album are like that though yeah 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 <laughs> I agree. What did you think of this one? Yeah, Bryce? so I don't know. It's a good song, you know the uh, the percussion, like you mentioned, the the beat, the drums there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I have anything particular to say about this one that I haven't already said. You know, the the production's really good. Yeah. You have to sort of listen to it to know the piano. I think is good on this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, mirroring yeah. the the melody, uh, the vocal melody at times absolutely so um and one thing that i wanted to get out of the way 808s are drums right uh, yeah, yeah they're so a it's a drum machine I okay <laughs> it, yeah it's a drum machine and and they also use the reference yeah. to describe a bait like a bass yeah. line uh typically used in hip-hop okay that's what i so, thought yeah so, <laughs> that's so what i that's, thought okay because i always remember um, yeah. what's the song where he goes kick the 808s yeah <laughs> So, and that's Either typically why, like, right in this song, that there's a heavy feature on, like, the drum and bass, you know, bass yeah. line type stuff. And a lot of these songs. Yeah, a lot of these songs. Yeah. Like that. But, um, and I like it. I think it's great. Yeah, which is, that's something okay, that, cool. um, what I really like about the album, because I, I typically like bass line in, in just about anything, whether it's, you know, tuba, cello, mm -hmm. you know, bass guitar. That's what really draws me in is the, is the actual, uh, the bass line, so... Yeah. Nice. All right, guys. Moving on. Yep. Love Lockdown. Fifth song. Yeah. Other big single. I like his singing on this one. You know how I've said, you know, his singing isn't always his strong point, but I liked it on this one. To me, this is like a, like, classic yay sound. Like, it's just, it, it's, when you think of his music, to me, this song embodies that. What did y'all think? I don't know, I really like the percussion on this one, and, like, the rhythm. Like, it's mm -hmm. got that very, like, marching band almost sound. Yeah, yep. Got a pace to it, and I like how the uh, piano accentuates that in a lot of the, the parts that do it. Yeah, so so this Same. is one of my favorite songs with the percussion, um, and, and I really like the piano to it as well. And I really find it has, like, a, toward the end of it even, it has a very, like, primitive sound. It almost sounds like tribal in a sense, and it just, I think it's a great, 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 yes. great addition to the album. And it also, you know, continues on with that theme of inner conflict, which I think's, you know, very supportive. Uh, I think it's a excellent, excellent song there. I agree. And we see this in other music from him, like the kind of tribal yep. influence. The instrumentals, like this, that's why I said this is like a total yay sound to yeah. me, so I like it. Yeah, and it great. actually does pop up later on in the album again, too, so I found that that was really yeah. a good connective uh, piece. Absolutely. Okay, well, I, I've got a, 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 like, so lyrically, this album's a breakup album, and it's kind of conflicted in a lot of these different songs. I know that can definitely be part of, like, yeah. you know, a breakup. Uh, like, you can be very emotionally conflicted about it. But I don't know. How did y'all feel about this? Like, in this one, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, like, towards the end. See, he's like, see, I had to go. See, I had to move. Like. Yeah. Like, uh. Yeah. It, I don't know. I, I just like feel he's like he's. Like, terms. All over the place with it sometimes. I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. And, th and that's him. Yeah. Like, he is all over the place. And a lot of his music and, and and his personal life and in interviews and all that kind of stuff, he's always all over the place. And I think this is like a glimpse into his, you know, kind of I don't want to say normal, but um, his his mental state. And um, I but uh, you're right, like breakups, you are all over the place. You know, one minute you're like, oh, th this is right, like I needed to get out of here, and then the other minute you're sad that you're alone and you're grieving for what could have been, you know, so I think it's, it's, uh, indicative of the album and, and of how he was feeling at the time. So, but yeah, he definitely does go all over the Yeah, that's, I certainly agree with that. I actually, one of the notes I had written down for that song was, 
um, there's a strong sense of entanglement to me. And that's, I mean, I think it's the same thing. It's, it's indicative of everything he discusses in the album up to this point. You know, he's dealing with that inner, inner conflict. And I find like in some songs, it's almost like, it's more like, uh, more like an anthem of supporting himself. And in some of them, he's, you know, I'm the problem. So I think it just kind of fits right in with, with what's going on. All right. Well, yep. next song. All right. Paranoid featuring Mr. Hudson. This is a collab that I didn't mind. I didn't know who Mr. Hudson was, but I thought this sounded good. I love the sound of, of this song. I think it's fun. It's like a fun driving song, but it's also about paranoia, which is I think is kind of, um, you know, a little bit, uh, how you say it, like, um, a little bit like ironic, I guess, that it's to me it's a fun song, but the the message of the song really isn't fun, you know what I mean? But I liked I don't know if, if y'all remember or watched the video, but Rihanna is in the video and I thought the video was good. But anyway. So this one was another one where he's kind of all all over the place because he's talking about like kind of being paranoid and then he's like, But don't worry about it. So I thought that was <laughs> another um one of those where he's <laughs> a little bit all over the place yeah what'd y'all think so this sounds very 80s to me like i know the the yeah, like, yeah, synth yeah. And electronic sounds kind of a hallmark of 80s music but this song yeah. especially like just the synth they use and especially that yes. big like minor to major chord change yep it, it just screams 80s to me yeah see that's that that's why yeah, I liked it, though. Yeah, same here. That, yeah, I thought it was that's a throwback. The same, that's yeah. the same notes I had written was that I absolutely love the late 80s, early 90s synth. It's like, to me, that, that is yeah. dead on. <laughs> like, it is perfect. You know, it's it's really definitely a, a throwback piece. Yeah. So you don't like that about it, this Bryce? Or you fine. Do like I'm that? not a huge fan of the 80s sound, though. Uh, I like it. I think it's just like fun i guess you know so that's why i said this yeah. is like a fun yeah. sounding it's got song. yeah that laid back sort of fun tone to it especially with the like uh yeah chorus where they bring in like the feature and there's that additional yeah. singer it sounds definitely very like you know kind of got like a party vibe to it yes but then it's about like paranoia so it's like <laughs> is this fun i don't know <laughs> Okay, how do you feel about the lyrics? He comes across as an asshole to me in this one. <laughs> yeah, he kind of does. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah, one. see, uh, the only other thing I had noted was that I thought the chorus was really weak on this. I didn't particularly oh, really? like it yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, I like the chorus on yeah, this one. Huh. <laughs> Y'all are opposites on yeah, the chorus. Yeah, so, so, like, so far, yeah, 100%. Funny. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but yeah funny. i mean it's this this one the beat was really good to me but other than that it's not i didn't find the the lyrics too uh too too great i mean it, it he was definitely dealing with some trust issues in in, in here and uh i thought it was yeah <laughs> but but i mean it didn't take away it didn't i didn't feel like it added to to the album to me but it certainly didn't take away it just kind of followed the theme you know yeah it's perf- perfectly agree. perfectly fine. <laughs> it's perfectly Kanye, I yeah. think, you know. All right, anything else on this no. one? So, RoboCop. Another song where he kind of right. comes across Robo-Cop. like an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like the line where he says, you turned my life into Stephen King's. <laughs> like, <laughs> But I didn't quite understand like the RoboCop. Because she's like, like policing him. I don't get the why Robocop uh, specifically. Well, I think it's going with the synth of the song. So I think it's. Uh, well, and I yeah. think he said it's something about period. turn me into yeah. a robot. Like, didn't, didn't he say that in there? Like, that he's becoming a no, robot? No, he says, so something? I could never be your robot. Yeah. Oh, I can never be your robot. Yeah. So maybe that's where it's from. But I didn't get the policing thing. That yeah, makes I think sense. there's. Uh, I, I think he. Okay. Now, this is my least favorite song lyrically, I think, but I think he ties it all together well. Like, I get what he's trying to do. It just, it's just not for me. Whereas the music I find is fantastic. Yes. 
Yeah, I thought the music was very creative. I like his use of instrumental. Yeah, like I, I, well, exactly. Like I, I felt like the the lyrics were just really weak, but musically, I absolutely loved the transition from the drum and bass to the more like orchestral fantasy style. Like I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. It's excellent strings in here. The violin, cello, awesome. I think they're supported really well. It's just I find it really uh, musically excellent. Right. But as far as yeah. the lyrics go, I just found it kind of like, I found it very belittling or, you know, uh, I don't know, it just yeah, seemed very yeah. condescending, just, you know. Especially yeah, but that's the him. outro, yeah. like, you're a spoiled little L.A. girl. Like, what? Yeah. It, like, yeah. he is extremely, like, hypocritical in that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He is, he is. But well, we've heard that from him before, like personally from him, like in, you know, like I said, interviews or his whole persona is kind of like that in, um, where he likes to spread the blame and then sometimes he's taking on the blame. It's, it's like this constant contradiction. But again, that's kind of what I like about him that he's just so straightforward in his um, inflated ego, I guess. So. <laughs> But yeah, I thought the same thing that you did. Yeah, and musically, this song is fantastic. I really love the strings, like you mentioned. Yeah. Like, this is probably one of my favorite songs on the album because of those strings. Like, and I love the chord progression there yeah. with the strings. Like, that just sounds really great mm -hmm. together. Yeah, I, I agree. If if I could get That's an really instrumental cool. version of that, I think it'd be perfect. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's just... Yeah. <laughs> no lyrics. I didn't mind the lyrics. They're fine. Not yeah. the best, but they're fine. All right. All right, number eight, Streetlights. I thought that this song, I thought it was creative. I thought it was poetic. It was It was more like poetry. Um, and the message, of course, is, is life's not fair, you know? So I like this song. What did you guys think? Yeah, this is also probably one of my favorites from the album. Like, I really like the synth line that dominates throughout. That sort of like uh, going back and forth between the two notes, and the, mm -hmm. the I don't know what mm -hmm. to call it, but it's kind of got like a bit of a glitchy effect on it when yeah. it's uh, the tremolo, I guess. And I really love the auto tune in this. I like how distorted it is. I oh. do too. I think this is one of the better songs yeah, on the I album. Yeah, the background vocals too that come in at a certain point, just great. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, and I definitely, I mean, same thing. The sound is very cohesive with the album. Like, I think it's, it's it has that theme of personal growth to me. It, it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's just a good song. I mean, it's, I don't really know what else to say about it. <laughs> yeah, I think it invokes, um, like, these feelings of, yeah, life isn't fair. It's kind of sad, you know, struggling through it, but we're all kind of struggling yeah. through it. You know what I mean? Like, I just. I, I like the feelings that it invokes and it, it makes you, um, it yeah, makes it it's relatable. Al it's almost so, like, like each of these, these struggles are just like uh, fleeting moments in time, basically, is what I got out of it, you know? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I like it. Right. And I think lyrically, this is probably the best song on the album. Yeah, I It's not agree. a ton of lyrics, but it really works for, you know, what it's going for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Next song. Okay, bad news. So this one sounds like his significant other is cheating, right? That's what y'all yes. got from this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I thought this song was okay. Like the beats aren't bad. I do. I get a little tired of his repetition in the song though. Oh, really? So. Yeah, just a little so bit. So I yeah. love the, the beat in this song. I find that like the. He does He's like an good, yeah. like an upbeat rim shot that's repetitive in a song that I think's like phenomenal. It kind of gives like a sound of like a like a funky time signature to me. But I, I love the overall sound and I like the long instrumental out to it. I think it's just a as far as sound goes, this mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. Just the way that the 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 drum and bass is in this song. I like the sound. It's, it's his lyric, the repetition of his lyrics kind of. I was yeah. like, all right. <laughs> kind of wore on me at the, by the end of the song. This is probably the most forgettable song on here to me, but I still think it's a solid song. Yeah, it's solid. Yeah, yeah. It's a good song. All right. Uh, is that all we have to say? Sure. 
All right. So, see Next. you in my nightmares. Featuring Lil Wayne, all right? To me, this is another um, kind of yay sound. Like, you you know it's him. Like, he, it sounds like him, which I like. And then I think Lil Wayne's feature on this. I kind of feel like this was, like, when Lil Wayne was going through his, like, kind of cracked out phase. Where he was, like, using these different these different sounds and yeah. voices in his, in his singing. And I like, um, I always like Lil Wayne's, like, versus his creativity and he not he's not afraid to use like really simple things like he says something like you think your shit doesn't stink but you're mrs pu i just thought that was funny yeah. that's that's so like lil yeah. wayne so <laughs> yeah, i had to laugh yeah, at that it one it's so, it's so simple yeah but it's funny because it's like kind of like you throw back to when you're a little kid you know but i i liked the feature on here but again i felt like it was, you know, Lil Wayne's kind of cracked out sound. And it could have been fine without the feature. But overall, I like this song. Like, See You in My Nightmares. I don't know. I just think that's kind of like, starts off as a fairy tale kind of thing. And then now it's a nightmare is kind of the message. And I don't know. I think that's kind of a cool, cool song. What y'all think? Yeah, overall, overall, I like the song. Um, I, I think it has more like that anthem type music to it. Definitely. Which yeah. which I find interesting because I, I find that there's a like a contradiction to the way it's actually sung lyrically. So I think I think that's pretty cool because they, they have some kind of darker sounding lyrics to it. Like when Wayne comes in, he sounds very kind of like uh, dark and kind of demonic at first, and then which is you know pretty <laughs> yeah. pretty interesting to the, to contradict the beat. <laughs> And then I like the strings on the way out. I mean, I think that's, you know, good with the heavy synth over it. I mean, I think it's just really, I think it works. You know, it's not the same thing. I think they could have did without the feature, but I think this one is actually more relevant than the other ones as far as what the song's going for and sound. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yeah, and I, I, like you mentioned, it's very, like, anthemic. It sounds mm -hmm. like that. I really like the vocals on this. They're very, like, forceful and kind of like raspy like you definitely feel yeah. sort of yes. like anger and pain in that and like trying to get mm -hmm. over it but still sort of like you know feeling it that aggression and yeah i like when they express yeah. themselves yeah. like yeah. that yeah and i like the the synth the main synth line throughout like that yeah. sounds really good and i like the line uh See you in my nightmare. Oh, how did you get there? Because we were once a fairy tale, but this is farewell. I I think that's solid. I think yeah. that's good. Yes. Yeah. I like that line. Yes. I, I like how you dug into the lyrics there, because usually it's me <laughs> doing the lyrics, lyrics, but I really like that part. You do, but it, you're more of the, um, you know, music part, and I'm more of the lyrics yeah. part. But I really, um, I'm glad you pointed that out, because that was like my favorite part of the song. All right, bringing it back, number 11, Coldest Winter. I thought this one was a little sad, but I really like the synth and I like the drums. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a really good song. Yeah, I thought the sound think? was very dynamic. Um, I, I really like the sound of it. I just didn't particularly care for the lyrics too much. But as far as sound goes, I, I just I thought it was really good. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, I think this is, it's interesting you bring up the lyrics, because I actually like the lyrics on this one. I especially like that, uh, like, <laughs> the majority of these lines are repeated, and it gives us this very, like, yeah that along with these sort of, like, I don't know what to call them. They kind of sound like glitch noises, though, in the, uh, like, on yeah. that, on the beat. And it gives us this very, like, you know, broken record or, like, broken, uh, like, tape effect sort of where yeah, it's, it's it skipping kind of goes with the yeah. theme yeah right and it's about yeah i thought so too I, I longing for love lost yeah i liked it i thought it was good and and i wrote down the synth i didn't know what to call that sound either but i i thought it was really well done here yeah i, I did yeah. i did like the concept of like it was something along the lines like uh when spring comes uh, mistakes will defrost or you know It'll wash away the mistakes or something like that. It was base, basic concept. And I thought that was a like a cool concept in a song. 
But it just, like, there yeah. wasn't anything lyrically that really drew me in and captivated me. I just, like, I really liked the way the song was going musically, though. Yeah. Yeah. See that. Yes. All right. Number 12, Pinocchio Story. This song sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it was more of a poetry slam. Like, it's couldn't you see, like, uh, live freestyle, being in a, I a little venue. <laughs> yeah. Well, which I didn't dislike it. I mean, like, I thought it was fine. I liked the lyrics, but it definitely was, like, to me, all I kept thinking was, like, poetry slam. Like, everybody snaps at the end, yeah, you know? <laughs> like, I just thought it was just, yeah. Yeah, it was poetic. I could see being at a concert hearing him kind of freestyle this way and liking it. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's more of an atmospheric, like, you had to be there kind of thing. So, <laughs> like, I don't know. I think I thought it was kind of cool, but it, it's not a so good I song. I love this song. Yeah. I, uh, oh, I, I, okay. Yeah, I think Do actually you? the complete opposite. I find it to be, yeah, so. Really? I, I, I like the live sound. It's not my favorite because I'm I'm never a yeah. huge fan of like when people are screaming in in the audience and whistling <laughs> and stuff like that because I, I find yeah. it I find it kind of <laughs> disrespectful to other people in a live venue like if you're trying to take something in like the artist never hears what you're saying or really yeah. cares so those screams just kind of make everything muddled in a song but I found I found it very very heartfelt sound and I thought that was. The part that I liked a lot, you know, it, it sounded like there was a lot of emotion to it, but more so yeah. what I like about it is that it kind of forecasted what he was going to be doing in the future, working with like the gospel choirs and like doing that kind of stuff, because he really yeah. went off onto that, like more live kind of um, in the moment type work. And I really appreciate that kind of stuff. Listening to him go, you know, it, it kind of later on in his other albums. Um, it just kind of way he changes mm -hmm. his, his trajectory. And the other thing I really like too, is that there's a, there's a real subtle guitar riff in a background. And I think it's just awesome. Like, I think it's just, a, it's, it just adds to this particular song a lot to me. That's interesting. Interesting perspective. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm kind of the same way. I'm like, uh, I mean, I, I thought, like, if you were there, it would be cool. Like, yeah, you know, you get all hyped mm -hmm. up. Yeah. But I definitely, I think it's, like I said, atmospheric. Like, if I was there at his concert, I'd be like, yeah, I'd be one of the, <laughs> you know, screaming people. But, yeah, I mean, I kind of like that they included it on the album and as the last song. I thought that was a good placement. But, like, as a song, it's not, like, a song song. You yeah, know it's, it's like a bonus like, track in a way to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so I, yeah, I, I agree yeah. with the placement yeah, part definitely. of it as well. Um, but it, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the album. If there's only one thing that I had to say that, you know, one song that didn't necessarily fit in, it, it would be this one. But I do like the fact that they included it. Because, like I said, to me, it, it kind of shows his, his trajectory. You know, it's like... Well, yeah, and thematically, I think it fits yeah. in thematically, but uh, just the style doesn't. I don't yeah. think it fits anything. I think it's a bad song. It's live. <laughs> I don't like the live sound. <laughs> uh, it's really quiet for some reason, like it was recorded poorly, or that's a stylistic yeah. choice. Yeah. Either way, I don't like it. Like somebody somebody in the audience yeah, is recording it. I think it. that's yeah, both. I think, exactly. it's, I think it's a stylistic choice. I think he probably had something like when they do the live shows, you know, they sound very, very good. So this sounds like it was recorded by a fan to me. You know, it sounds like yeah. it sounds like yeah. somebody was just hanging yeah. out with their phone up in the air next to somebody who was screaming. And, exactly. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. think it was supposed to be very much like uh, an in the moment feel. Yeah, but I I don't yeah. like the lyrics. I, get I it. think he's just like the the production's really sparse. I can't hear it very well, and he's just rambling. And I think none yeah. of it works. It's a terrible closer. <laughs> Coldest Winter would have been so much better. I, I don't like anything about yeah. this song. It is too long. I, it's yeah. way too long for what it is. <laughs> yeah. It's way too long. 
I I don't mind the the message behind the song, like you know, live sure, a lie and whatever. Right. Like I I think it's definitely introspective, but yeah, I I can see where you're coming <laughs> from with that. Yeah. Well, guys, but, yeah, that's our I big it. disagreement on yeah. this album. <laughs> It's yeah. a big point of contention there. Well, I mean, I think overall, though, great album. I'm really glad we reviewed this one um, because I don't know that I would have sat and listened to the whole album otherwise. And I thought it was just a great album. Definitely going to be adding some of these, some more of these songs to like my playlist, you know. So I thought it was wonderful. Um, I think it really spoke to that time in his life. And I think it still holds true today. It's still relatable. When you hear it, you still want to jam out to it. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's all good. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's definitely, um, I think it's a very strong album. I think it's very emotional. I think there's a lot a lot of really good stuff to this, about this album. And it's, it's definitely more timeless than a lot of albums that people put out regularly. So I, I certainly appreciate it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Great album. Really good pop stuff. The uh, instruments are good. The everything about it. Well, I have issues with the lyrics, but everything musically, I think, just is really <laughs> solid. It did great yeah. work on here. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, without further ado, do you want yeah, me to close the this auto tune's out? good? Forgot to mention that. Auto tune. Like yes, auto-tune. yay for auto tune. Yeah. Right. yeah, close this out. Two thumbs up. All right, well, this has been Beach View with our special guest, Travis. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you'll keep listening to all of our wonderful podcasts. Bye. Bye. Travis not going to say bye.